Yeah, there was a little bit of, you know, uh, negativity that we received from some people saying, well, how could you just, you know, take time off and leave um, during a time when there is so much happening in Ukraine and as Our Boho Beautiful official app. Download it today in the App Store. Let us know where you're from in the comments mm. section here. And if you're watching this a little bit later on YouTube, because this will go on YouTube eventually. Coming and spending some time with those of you which are part of Boho Beautiful Official, mm -hmm. which is our app. You can get in the, you can download it in the App Store, or you can go to BohoBeautiful.tv, and um, it's where all our content, all our exclusive content, everything we do exists. So much exists on that platform, and um, we're really, really proud of this incredible community that it has created. So, Thanks. right now we are thankful for all of you. It, it's it's such a such a dear. Thing in our hearts so. and to and to be back because it's been a while it has mm -hmm. been quite some time actually since we've been with you guys yes. um, so you guys know that uh, in our last check-in on the official app and we mentioned on social media as well Mark and I took a mini sabbatical as like what we like to call it because you know sabbatical means a year off or something but a month off and we truly took a month off it wasn't just like oh we went for a vacation like no no we we went off social media we went off everything because we, we needed space and we went mm -hmm. inward and, and we went inward. and that's i think that's the difference between vacation and sabbatical because a lot of people are like how was your vacation and we're like it really wasn't it was about like it was about a quest you know it was about going inside of ourselves and because we just needed to find so much um you know 2022 started off as a very difficult year for us personally and it didn't get any easier and um yeah and you know when the war happened in Ukraine, that was kind of the last straw that really, really pushed us to a really, really bad place. And so this kind of sabbatical time off was very, very necessary for our own mental health, but also in helping us create that space so we can come back and shine brighter and, and provide more for, for all of the wonderful people that follow what we do, you know? And for all of you guys here with us, um, your support in our departure for a short period let's see if that's any better you're back we Yay. changed networks okay we're back Sorry, guys so anyways we we're we're not to brood on it but i think there was yeah so, so let's go back to before the internet started to cut out um yeah there was a little bit of you know uh negativity that we received from some people saying well how could you just you know take time off and leave um during a time when there is so much happening in Ukraine. And as some of you guys know, we were literally in Ukraine like a few weeks before the war happened. So it was, you know, we celebrated Christmas with my family there and spent January there, January there. So, you know, like you, it very, very much hit so close to home. And the thing that's really um, important for us is that even though you know, we posted as much as we could in regards to the different charities and things that we supported because you have to be so careful, and I have to say this, with the charities and things that are supporting these kinds of events because there's so much corruption that happens, especially in Ukraine. And so that's why, like, the, the places that we were recommending for people to go and donate to, we had to truly vet out. And if, actually, if you go to our Instagram account now, you'll see there's like a highlight stories that we have on the, on the uh, profile that you can go through and it'll show you the different organizations that you can donate to. Um, but strictly because we see it firsthand, you guys, like, you know, I have my hometown in Poltava. I have so many family and friends that did they, they didn't leave, they stayed there and it's, very close to, to Kharkiv, which well, has been pretty much destroyed now. And, and we hear about all the um, money that all the countries are giving and sending and yeah. all the aid and all the weapons and all of this and all that. And in Poltava, for instance, since the war began, we as just our own beings and some of our family members have just been sending money directly to people in Ukraine because like, they're not getting anything. And the, the soldiers, which we know, like a friend of ours that was playing, he had a child our, the same age, age as Xavier. And when we in Ukraine for Christmas, we all went to the mall and like went to a ball pit with the kids together. And now he's on the front lines without any protection. So we're like literally sending these people money for bulletproof vests and helmets, money for helmets. Yeah. And like, it's crazy. And even like warm clothes. And that's the thing is the Ukrainian government isn't providing anything for, for 
soldiers, and these soldiers are kids. They're like 20 year old boys, you know, that they're they're drafting to the front lines, and a lot of them come from very very poor situations that they can't afford to go and buy like, you know, layers and layers of thermals because they're spending so much time outside in the front lines, and so because of all of this like we personally had to take it upon ourselves with our family and we just started you know supplying these things ourselves to our family because we were just so worried that from seeing how it was going that the help through these organizations wasn't getting fast enough to there or anything well, it at still all. isn't the mayor of Poltava left and took all the money from the town he actually, actually abandoned the city happened, last week like last week like this is ukraine yeah. it's a very corrupt yeah. country and there's a lot of money going in and even the american government just released a statement saying they don't know where it's going but they keep giving them weapons and they aren't tracking where they're going and it's just like it's one of these terrible situations where the fog of war has just created this like yeah. giant question mark so that we've, t we've taken upon ourselves to mobilize on Instagram. So if you see this and you want to help, there's a lot of information we put on Instagram. But you guys here on Official, you guys know, because every month we've all com been coming together, which is so amazing, all of you guys being so supportive in the comments every month. The last two months, we've been doing our Karma Project for Ukraine. And that, to us, is lot. the biggest action we as a community can do, which is help each other, research the right places, and then come together as a community and send our love and our support and our prayers. And that, that's like, you, people can say we're not doing enough. That's fine, everyone has an opinion. No one walks a day in our shoes. No one knows how many tears Juliana has cried for her family. No one knows how much effort and energy it ours, and that's totally okay. We're not expecting anyone to know that. We just know that you guys here on Official know, and we know that we as a community are mobilized for Ukraine in a way of support and love and light because we are demanding peace in our prayers. It is about peace. Yeah. It is not about taking sides. It's not about pointing fingers. All it is is about praying and demanding and, and, and manifesting that people start talking about a solution, not talking about worst case scenarios because everyone wants to talk about these yeah. worst case scenarios. What about World War III? What about escalation? What about this? What about that? But we know that it's about peace. And the more you talk about those terrible outcomes, the less energy is being you, focused you towards. You have to focus your energy on manifesting what we want to create, and that is peace. And so that's why, like, we don't, to us, even as, as two people, we didn't want to start sharing all these things about terrible war and or acts of war that are happening in Ukraine because people know and we shouldn't have to like we don't need to put our energy and our light onto the darkness you know what we have to do is is support and lift each other and and share organizations that are trying to do the work and give thanks to the people that are helping like for example as we're here I just wanted to say how grateful I am to the Polish community because when we reached out, um, you, you know, I have family all over Ukraine. It's very broad, not just the Polish community, but... Well, people, I mean, people all over the world really reached out. Everyone Everywhere. reached out. Was Come like, on, Can I help? Honest. Can I help? But every every border and country. Oh, for sure. Every, like, for it was sure. unbelievable. Yeah. We were actually, we asked for help, and we got so much Which, in return... That it was overwhelming. ...that we couldn't handle it all. Yeah. We didn't know what to do. It was yeah. crazy, and it was like so much joy it really it, it, but then also so much fear because the answer could be in all of the streams of help and we couldn't figure out how to get through it all it yeah. was crazy and just to give you guys a quick backstory just again because a lot of you are asking about like how is my family doing and and how is the situation because we truly like have eyes on the ground there uh two of my cousins uh, who are female uh they ended up um leaving Kiev and going into Warsaw and they actually ended up living for a month in Warsaw until they finally got their visa into Canada so they've been safely transferred to Canada they're with my mom right now but the rest of their family um, they fled Kiev and we actually found them this cabin which wasn't easy to find but we did through lots of connections and lots of people's help in the beautiful and high um, energy Carpathian mountains yeah and so they actually were able to spend a whole month there together um, while you know Kiev was under attack they've just recently went back to Kiev because things got a little bit easier but you know my cousin is there and texting me every day because I just keep getting you know updates and he's like you know like the 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 sirens go off and they kind of take it day by day and if the situation gets worse they'll have to flee again but you know they also had to go home because they literally left with a coat they had no clothes with them like none of their personal belongings and so you know we're, we're, we're seeing it and experiencing it even though we're not there from through our family's eyes and it has been really difficult and all we're trying to do is is call for peace because it's really hard um, 
to be honest, I can't even watch the mainstream media about it because it brings too much negativity and sadness to my heart and to my emotional state of being. And I think after so long and after already hearing from what's happening on the ground, like, you know, they dropped two bombs in my hometown and like that idea of, of having to like surrender to it and accept it has been a big, big um, challenge in, in my personal life. So going even deeper and, and reading the news of the terrible war crimes that are happening against my country is, has been not serving me. And again, and that's something sometimes I think is necessary to recognize is that when the news and the circumstance of the world gets too much, like how are we taking care of our own selves and how are we able to stay strong so we as individuals can continue to shine our light without having all of these external energies lower our frequency because you can't help but feel terror and sadness and and just I don't know explain what? like no, <laughs> the, no. you know what, what's happening so you're explaining it so well and I mean it's the it is it, it there's a fine line between information and I don't want to say clickbait, but a fine line between sharing information about what is going on and scaring people into the human impulse to click and to and to be subjected to the energy that it brings. And and they did that with COVID for two years. And we watched very quickly the same tactics in the news turn very fast right towards Ukraine, which is not just so close to home, but it's 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 so deeply humanity because we're talking about a layer of governments at the top and all of their government fuckery excuse my language all of them everyone nobody is free of blame not being able to figure out that it's 2022 and that we've learned from the past and how pathetic it is where we can get to a place where we won't even again i go back to it no one wants to talk about peace everyone wants to talk about escalation and what ifs and probable circumstances and what might happen if and all of this nonsense because it feeds into the whole like statistics about COVID and what about a wave coming and what about this and what if you don't wear your mask or what if you don't get vaccinated and all that stuff and now they do it with war and with human lives and the thing is that no one seems to just recognize is on both sides it's just boys that are being sent to war and they're being sent to die they're being sent to live through something that no human being in this day and age we're, they say we've progressed and I don't think that's necessarily true as a species because we're still falling victim to the exact same cyclical, terrible, like mistakes that we have yeah. for the last, for centuries. And then you think about how that's also going to affect not just what's going on now, but the future generations. Like, you know, I pick for instance, like a really close friend of ours in Poltava who is right now on the front lines. You know, my mom, who's like best friends with his mom, talks to his mom every day. And she was, you know, his mom is telling our family how much PTSD now he has like just from the experiences that he's had so far of having Why to be in that, that in that in that moment like you never expect like you, you see it in movies and you know games like video games but you never expect that you would be right there with with a gun having to you know what I mean fight and so and the media takes the humanization yeah, out of yeah. it a lot of the time and actually what's interesting was his father and that's like a really a shining life story I guess his father who's there right now with him his role a lot right now has been to go with the different groups military groups in Poltava and he does like almost like counseling like they're very religious family and he's doing one-on-one -on -one counseling with a lot of these boys who are having to experience this for the first time to like mentally help them cope with it because as soon as if you're unable to cope with it mentally it's going to affect you physically and, and that doesn't help getting through the situation and so you know there's like People are taking it upon themselves to try and help in every single way and um, you know and we do what we can like we actually personally because of the connection in my hometown we've been like paying for a lot of the people's surgeries like uh, people were uh, like were uh, war injuries and different soldiers that are brought to the hospitals because of our friend they always just call up you know this person needs surgery on his brain like we have a woman that's what... about to recover from the the things that I didn't tell you about. But anyways. No, um, no, I know. And what's so crazy is we want, we, we're we trying to figure out how to get more money to be able to flow into the actual hands of the people. Yeah. And that's the, and it's been crazy because we can only spend a certain amount per day. So 
we're able to fill a certain amount per day, but we want to... We want to extend our help, be like, okay, everyone, let's come together and we can start like an organization. But to us also, like, well, we can't just start like taking all these people's money, but not have a way to send it all well, our at bank, once. Our, our like, banks are The limiting banks are us, limiting yeah. a certain amount per day, and if we get X amount, it might take us 100 days to get that over and in place. And Lord knows, in 100 days, it could have been so used on the, on the, on the third day. So maybe there's a way, and if anyone knows about any kinds of ways of getting money directly into people's bank accounts that's clean and clear without limitations of Canadian bank accounts, because Canadian bank accounts drive us crazy with their limitations, um, and, and maybe there's a way then that we can we can mobilize and again. please let us know. If, if you if, know, like maybe it's through yeah. crypto, but we don't know a lot about crypto, or maybe it's through some kind of like open source banking. Because like, for example, the way we've been able to send money before is through Western Union, because that was really easy in, in Ukraine, but that right now is really difficult for some reason. Like they won't even somewhat, I don't know, I, I won't get into it, but like the only way we've been able to do it now is through my mom's direct connection to our friend's bank account. So we're like sending it directly to But them, they limit but, us. But they so limit anyways, us. So. I think we're going off. <laughs> But I just wanted to kind of yeah. bring you guys up to speed because I know this there's there's been a lot of questions and and you know reaching like what should we do or who do we support and what organizations how can we support Ukraine and we just wanted to share with you guys this is what we've been doing personally um, we haven't been sharing it on social media because it's really like a personal thing that we're just taking it upon ourselves through our families but like I mentioned again there are great organizations that we have vetted so far and they are in the highlights of our Instagram page so please if you feel the need you want to support in any way you can check those out and that uh, you know, there's many wonderful people doing incredible things out of their hearts for the people right now in Ukraine so that's that's kind of a big update for you um, on that side of things. but so this this time that we took for ourselves um, was very necessary because you know it was like we mentioned earlier it was from starting the year with Kind of feeling burnt out and then covid oh and then and then the war and it was like when you have so many kind of negative energies coming down on you it's important to retreat i saw find I, space i saw mm. someone on the on the youtube community board actually being like i'm so sick of your guys negative outlook of things this year what yeah. happened to you you're so dep and it was just like they were chewing us out for like actually being at our worst and i was like Oh, it was so painful to read in a way where it's just like, I want to just be like, it's been a really hard year. Like beyond any... I think any, it's like, been like that for so many But exactly, people, right? that's exactly like, it. Like to like, us, it's nothing compared to others, but just like... And I guess we are able to share online because of our position, but I'm sure if every single one of us here was able to just all, get a, a live and share with what we've been going through personally, everyone's been kind of faced with challenges, you know, one way or another, so... I think it's a great lesson that that we always try to just find in our own struggles and to share with the community. It's like, well, when we feel life coming down on us in a heavy negative way, what do we do? Well, to us, sometimes all it takes is to just unplug and retreat back and create space. And that honestly was the most healing and beneficial thing we could have ever done. Uh, we went to Mexico. Some of you guys were curious of um, where we went we did end up going to mexico and we actually uh found this beautiful like a vegan retreat it was a vegan hotel. resort hotel like i don't know this is their symbol it. actually right it's here called palmaya it's called palmaya mm -hmm. and it, and we got to know the owner and they they brought us out actually um to show us what they do there because it's very special and it's extremely unique and it's all vegan mm -hmm. um which is unbelievable and it was yeah. just like, it was the perfect environment for us to get to work on us, yeah. on restructuring and rebuilding and, and taking the first time in five years where we've been living in this um, really cyclical uh, feedback loop of reacting in our life, like reacting yeah, to everything totally. happening, react, mm -hmm. like just living in a state of like constant, problem solving, right? we, constant we, reaction yeah. for mm -hmm. business, for our life, for everything. And for the first time since I think Boho started, like saying like, why are we doing what we're doing? And let's really focus on that and use that as the nucleus, like the, like the, like the crystal energy at the center, like to go back into that crystal energy and to nurture it to begin to glow again and remind all the parts of us and all of the facets of our life for um, purpose and for alignment. And that's something that we haven't been able to do in a really long time. And 
to be honest, other than being a little bit emotional a minute ago because I'm frustrated with the fact that people aren't fighting, like, aren't talking enough about peace uh, during a time of war, um, I think we've managed to find something so special and valuable that has been missing in us for a really long, not a really long time, but has been dimming and I, and I think year it over was, year. It was that reconnection to the source and the divinity that we were also really, really looking for, which helps fuel everything that oh, yeah. we wish to share with what, everything that we do with Boho Beautiful. And so finding a space that gave us that opportunity to do so because not only was it a wonderful, beautiful place with vegan food, but they had this beautiful Waldorf childcare that was part like on the property and we were able to find like this incredible nanny as well that was very connected in the Waldorf style. And so, you know, Xavier was being able to go every day and play with children and like really be enveloped in this new you know, Waldorf style, it's all about like hands and creation, like he's baking bread and he, he was, baked like, his first bread. Yeah, like so <laughs> so to us too it's like it felt okay because we were leaving our baby for, you know, half a day and able to go and, and really go oh inward, but knowing that he was so well taken care of and playing and socializing with children and the, he was having such a blast. The best so, part was actually yeah. he, because he was the youngest because um, it was three plus unless you had somebody to specifically look after. So that's why we had to hire a separate. So because he was so young, yeah. Yeah. Um, he was also the most popular with all of the young <laughs> three to five year old girls. He was and we, always like in the center, then all these like young girls around him, like circling him, <laughs> like watching him and taking pictures with him, and he so was like cute. their little toy. But it was yeah. like it was so amazing to see him progress so much from our standpoint yeah. too, because you know we try our best here. We're in Nassara in Costa Rica to connect with other families with kids, but there's not a lot of opportunity on to a regular basis mm -hmm. to immerse him so so deeply um, into socialization like that. Mm -hmm. So cool. So Palmaya, guys, um, check it out. It's in it's in Playa Carmen. Playa del Carmen. And yeah. um, it's not, it's nothing. It's, it's like maybe a new world, like resorts aren't really our thing. Mm -hmm. And it took a little bit for us to actually- And that whole idea of like the all-inclusive because but, that never really been our we, style. I haven't but, been to one of those mm -hmm. since your brother got married ten yeah. years ago. Yeah, like literally, yeah. that's how. And but it was like, but it's different. It's like a new age kind of more connective. Like they don't have things like buffets where I always had an issue with buffets because I always find yeah. like it wastes food so much, right? Like when you see them at resorts, but like they don't have anything that it's all about a little bit more about conservation and self care and veganism, like even just reading through that thing, everything including like the pillows they use in their hotel is cruelty free, it's vegan, there's no animals used in anything of that resort. So it's like very and aligned with the values of, of our personal ethics. And, so. and, and Alex, the owner, brings in um, lots of spiritual healers yeah. and workers and, and shaman and does all kinds of programming. So it's a really great way to introduce people um, into yeah. um, a new world of spirituality and healing and, and, healing and yeah. connection. Um, so the, the price point might be a little high, but if you know you want to take a weekend or be a week and you you know it makes sense for you on the on the budget side, it was amazing. It's yeah. really worth it, you we, know, just to unplug. So we did that. And we hung out in Tulum for a bit too, which was really nice. Yeah. Tulum was like. Um, it was crazy. <laughs> I don't know if anyone's been to Tulum in the last few years, but it's kind of a shit show. It's, it's cool, exploded, but you kind of you know it still has a really beautiful community if you know where to go you know and we have lots of friends there so it was kind of one of the reasons why it called to us because we wanted to reconnect with some friends um so we went and we had a wonderful time but definitely like at times you're just like shocked by the insanity of some places you're like it is spring break like you know someone's talking about our new tattoos and it's sophia maya yes we did so we got some tattoos on do you want to show our hands so we our hands put it up How's that? So, um, we realized, there's, um, you want to talk about them? Sure, I mean... It's like chapter one and chapter, chapter two. Chapter two, this is kind of like our wedding tattoo we always talked about, and this is the Viking sign that means um, you create your own reality, and that is really the basis of everything that we do and everything we've ever done in our it, life. It's, it, it's, it started with your decisions today to find your tomorrow. Yeah. Um, once we took that statement and mm -hmm. applied it to our life, um, and, and lived that statement and renewed that statement every morning and every night together, the two of us. Yeah. Um, we were able to slowly create our, our, our entire reality. 
So and we to, did. To, so to create your own reality is is this symbol right there. Mm -hmm. And that was chapter one, we feel. And we feel as we went to this mini sabbatical and we recharged our inner crystal and we found um, we found a new perspective into the journey we've been on and, and, and a new vision for where this is all going to go. Um, we realized that our light couldn't be dimmed. Our light could not be dimmed. And this is the other one here. I don't mean to show my middle finger at everyone, but right here. Um, it's just, it's a light. And the symbol kind of has a meaning of there's no end to your light. And that is something that really connected with us. And like I mentioned earlier, you know, having that space um, that we gave ourselves for that time off really rekindled that connection with the divine. I truly felt like mm -hmm. it, like for the first time, just having certain experiences through meditation, like there's so much more clarity and space and that deeper connection that sometimes can get a little bit clouded but when we overwhelm ourselves with too many kind of current world things and energies, right? And so when you cleanse that out and, and open that channel, you connect to that I am presence, that, that beautiful divine source of energy that is within our hearts. And so this is kind of a representation to remind us that there is never an end to our light and we should always be at the front lines shining our light as brightly as we can no matter what comes our way no matter how much resistance or challenge brings forward that that is our purpose as all individuals i'm not just saying us here but each one each and every one of us has this light this light of love and compassion and kindness and if and we, we should remember that and know? if we remember it we remember that that we can never dump, dim like it, there is no end to any of our light mm -hmm. as long as we find the courage to authentically stand up in front of whatever darkness is in front of us and shine as brightly as we can yeah. and i think that's something we've learned in the last few years really deeply in our soul it's something we learned in the last few months yeah. um even more so than ever before yeah um so so those are our tattoos and then i actually got another one here i can share with you guys um on the side here and this is sanskrit for impermanence and it's atya if you look in, into that word but um i actually ended up getting this tattoo on the day my mom called and said there was a second bomb dropped um very very close to pretty much where i grew up where my first memories were and i get emotional talking about it but um you know there's like these um memories you have of your sorry <laughs> your childhood and like where you had all your first you know your first plays with friends and things like that and that that was this town in ukraine and when i found out that all of those things could just be vanished you know taken away from me it allowed me to connect to that greatest teachings that the buddhists and uh, hinduism teaches us in yoga and that is impermanence and that we that life is suffering in a way but that is life that the buddha teaches right and the impermanence of everything not just your memories not sorry not your memories but the things that create your memories but also life everything is fragile and everything is impermanent like we are impermanent this place where we are right now one day will be gone you know it'll be overtaken by whether it's war or nature or what what it is but that was a really really powerful lesson and that's kind of also what I, I personally am trying to find through this terrible tragedy tragedy that's happened to ukraine is i i look at it as a teaching you know to teach me this that it's okay you know because what i can do now is just focus on the present moment and move forward and everything one day will be turned into stardust just like we are we'll all go back to the stars yeah we'll all go back to the stars <laughs> it's that ram das thing we're all walking each other home and that's what this is this is for some reason each one of us here you watching this now us sitting in costa rica yeah. wherever we are in the world we've all managed to somehow culminate here at this moment like this little tiny grain of sand in an ocean of desert um, for this little moment that we share here for this blink and in another blink we'll all be gone and and that's okay and it's coming to peace with that but it's also coming to not just peace but an understanding that that's what makes it so special and that what that's what makes so much of all the noise not really matter and all the things that you think that means so much and we get so wrapped up in and we focus so much energy on 
it's and it's all like in the peripheral and it's it's literally all noise because what matters is this moment right here what matters is is the impermanence of this moment just as it ties to the next and it's gone and then as soon as we acknowledge this one it ties to the next and it's gone and i think the closer we can come and we talk a lot about these things to a deeper understanding of that um the, the truer our authentic self can be free can be free of all the egoic noise that holds on to so much and refuses to let go and 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 as we shatter the ego the true self shines and only through recognizing impermanence but not just recognizing it but accepting it and surrendering to it yeah. that's when that's when the true self work comes in exactly. and that's when the true self can shine through. and that's something we have to always remind ourselves of and to be honest this is one of the reasons why i placed this word right where it is so that anytime i'm in in this prayer position and that connection in anjali mudra i can always be reminded of it you know so and and yes. I got the, I got it actually here in Tibetan, right yeah, there. Yeah, Mark actually has some I have beautiful a few in Tibetan. Tibetan. So I started with with a compassion, and for those of you that have seen the Starbuck video, um, I started with the word of compassion. A dog that we tried to save in Nepal and couldn't, and that was in honor of him. And mm -hmm. then on my next arm, which I've never actually talked about, for Prince I got um, warrior in Tibetan, and that's right along here, mm -hmm. and that's because he showed us strength and nobility and honor in prince was our dog that passed away uh last year for those of you guys that don't know after nine beautiful years yeah. Yeah. and he's still with us he yeah. passed away but he is still sitting right here next to us right now and we know Always. that in our hearts, in our hearts. Yeah. and then permanence is the next true lesson mm -hmm. and i don't know if i'll continue all the way up my arms uh, but i just know that every time there's a moment of clarity i need to that i know i need to remember and honor and hold to myself that um it's okay to make it permanent, also slash impermanent <laughs> mark on my body. Yeah. Just to, to give that heartfelt, beautiful reminder. That's about kind it. of how we see tattoos. You guys will notice we you know we have body art on our bodies, but to us, or you know, it's always been about the meaning. It's to me, it's never just about like oh, I just want to put something on my arm. It's pretty. Like every little piece of ink on my body has such a strong connection to my heart that you know I, I'm proud have and remind me for the rest of my journey on earth you know so that's kind of how we see tattoos to us it's a very actual spiritual um work spiritual mm -hmm. connection for us in our personal lives is to permanently put something on our bodies that means something so deeply to us because well, i honestly i think one of the things is that so it's probably one of the reasons we all end up being able to live a full life and find happiness after so life being t sewn together with so much suffering but i think also it's it's an advantage to us as human beings in our consciousness as much as a disadvantage and it's our ability to forget and to forget like it's so crazy what we can go through in life and we don't we don't forget that it happens but we forget what it means to us or how it affected us sometimes and we forget like the truth of it and how it can that truth can can be used sometimes to anchor in into growth in a way that you won't fall back away from so I find that, yes, of course, it's, it's great that we don't forget, but we, we disassociate to the suffering of losing someone or losing, like, your like prince to us or having to go through what we went through with, with Starbuck in Nepal that day. But I think what's important is leaving breadcrumbs for your spiritual self. And we choose, I, I, I journal every day, so I go back in my journals and I leave breadcrumbs in my journal to carry me on a path back to not just remembering, mm -hmm. but to re-experiencing and, and reattaching to the lesson that, that, that can be used for so much incredible growth and understanding. And we also use tattoos for that. Mm -hmm. And so now every time you look at your prayer hands or every time I, I look at mine, um, I have a moment and an opportunity almost like, as a visual reminder yeah. to be like, oh yeah. It's like, I don't know if you guys have ever done this, but I remember when I was little, uh, my mom would be like, oh you know go get some bread at the store and, and put a cross on your hand so you remember that cross is to, to get the bread <laughs> it was like the little reminder right that you would write and so this kind of is a similar way but instead of just reminding you to go buy bread <laughs> you're, you're reminded of something really really deep but, and meaningful to you so but yeah, I think that's, it's a deeper meaning of why we we put 
ink on our bodies. But it's so cr- it's it's interesting that we forget so much. Like that. Yeah. You, like like. You but look at the culture, right? Like the, we're now with all of this like fast paced digital world and devices and headlines. Like it's really quickly that we as society like we move on, we forget certain things, right? And so we can't like it's it's a way to help maintain that we don't fall into that trap anchors and grounding An- anchors and grounding yeah because right now our our i feel i don't know if you guys feel the same way i feel like just the world and the energy is just moving so quickly and it is because of the digital devices and all of be. these yeah. headlines and things and they just go boom 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 and it's it's really hard to keep up sometimes and it doesn't give you enough time to process like and what is actually happening and that's what we meant by we just spent the last four years reacting to everything mm, because yeah. sometimes it's really important not to react but to find intention again because if you're not reacting then there's space but in reaction there's no intention because you're just reacting to the things to the headlines to the people in your life to, to the to the to-do list to your job to your schedule to the things and the whole structure that makes up each one of our individual matrices because we all live inside a whole system that we create around ourselves mm-hmm. that we sort of throw ourselves into every day and sometimes we get so stuck in the automaticity of it all that we don't ever have the time and we never seem to to sit down outside of your morning practice but to like which is still doing you're still doing something in your mo- and you're still like i have 15 minutes to meditate and now i have an hour for yoga but you never rarely get these opportunities to just be and to just say like okay now i want to set an intention for not just today maybe it's for a week or maybe the next day you want to talk about your intention for the year but and to constantly have these moments of renewal which are so important to us. It's something that we've really recognized that renewal is like, it is, it came actually from, uh, there was this quote, um, oh, what was the guy's name who wrote Walden from, from Thoreau? We, I, I was reading um, Henry David Thoreau Walden, and I haven't read a book because I've been reacting for so long. <laughs> Shh, don't tell anyone I haven't read a book and it feels like three years. Um, but he had a Finally, quote. Finally, you're reading it's now. unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. And there was this quote, and it was, every morning you must renew again and again forevermore and there's something about reading that on our time away that made the two of us when i brought it up later um it made us realize that should you forget to renew you end up drifting in a direction that not your intention takes you but that the circumstances or the reaction of your life starts to take you and i understand then a little deeper why the dalai lama gets up every morning at 3 a.m and writes and reads and writes and reads and has a practice and he renews himself and he says his mantras and he does his thing and then he starts his day at 6 Mm a.m and then i understand why everyone that i've read about and that i've studied that has ever accomplished great spiritual growth or amazing innovative things in their life or or what like those that have shined incredibly bright they've all underwent a really regimented self-discipline but self-loving that's the key discipline it is built on love it's not built on being austere with yourself yeah. it's built on it's not punishment, it's not punishment yeah. to, to have self-discipline to renew every morning into that truth and intention that's something that when you can do it's the greatest gift you can ever give yourself just to take 10 minutes and say oh yeah today just like yesterday i'm going to be a beacon of love and of light to all that cross my path and i'm going to set myself forward to make the great bill boho beautiful shine the brightest and greatest that it ever can Mm -hmm. and should we renew that way every night before bed and every day in the morning before we start it's kind of like the new secret for Mm -hmm. phase two our light (laughs) that will never dim yeah, I don't know. And, I, and I see so many, like I've seen a couple questions you guys sending us like, oh, what's next for Boho Beautiful? And, you know, there's there's a lot going to be coming to you. But right now we're finding a really beautiful path and balance of how to bring that forward. Um, so what's next? Lots. Yeah, but, there, there's quite a bit. Yeah. But at the same time right now, what we are aiming to do is just to be here for you guys as much as we possibly can. So of course, through your weekly videos and and calendars and and even live streams like this, I think it's really beautiful to be able to connect with the community that we cherish so much. Well, and we really want to Mm -hmm. figure out how to make this more of a community. So we've been playing with so many ideas and trying to figure out what the, waiting for the universe to instruct us to the right path. Like Mm -hmm. we did the, the, um, the survey this month yeah. Um, and only a thousand of you guys did it. Only a thousand. 
it, there's me, there's a lot more of you out there than that. So I don't know if you want to go back in your email and have a look. We asked a series of questions about the first Boho Beautiful physical retreat. Mm. And that's really important to us. So if you didn't take the two or five minutes, if, I think it's more like two, could you go back in your email and just give us your insight uh -huh. so maybe the universe will, will will give us a little bit of clarity. Thank you, Laura and John. And so, <laughs> so that we know Jessie. how to pursue, if we're going to, the most <laughs> effective and valuable retreat for you guys as a community. And then there's also on the other one we were talking, we're getting a lot of traffic here. On the other survey we were talking about, um, what were we talking about? Oh, um, a community, like an outlet that we could plug you guys with us into that like a different platform that you get access to being here on official and a lot of you guys actually answered that and it gave us a little bit of clarity and so we're trying to figure that aspect out too because but we're open to suggestions and we're open to ideas because to us it feels it always feels very one way and like us to you and you to us like it's just like a mandala we like to speak like this like like it's this beautiful mandala and all of these shoots are, are uh, of light are, are going out and connecting to you guys and coming back to us but now we need to figure out how to get the mandala to start connecting across between you guys and start culminating other centers of light yeah. and other parts of and it. then you know even we've had ideas that we just kind of put out to the universe of and this is just a dream that I'm sure we can just share with you guys because it's important to sometimes speak that out because maybe the right opportunities will come. But, you know, finding a place somewhere in the world where we can create a beautiful community, you know, and, and to have people come not just for a retreat, but to like come for a month or two, you know, and, and live somewhere like in a community based kind of place. And so we're like, if that is out there somewhere that kind of space and location maybe that's also in the books for us to be the creators of something that can bring like-minded people together um to not just for a week retreat but to go deeper and, and maybe relocate themselves for a time in their life you know like just i think the search for that community has really been on our hearts as well yeah and, and i think it's beautiful because the first portion of this was you're talking about a digital community. Yeah. And that's really beautiful in this era. Digital space and turn and finding, because there's so much darkness in the digital space, but finding a way to build a beautiful city of light inside the digital space. Yeah. And then what Juliana's now talking about is the other thing, the other half of us, because it seems like Boa Beautiful lives on two sides of the fence, is the physical space. Because we all together in the physical space get on our mats together. Mm -hmm. We all get online and talk about this together in the physical space, connecting through digital. But there's something so cool that could be about the, like building a community in physical world, like real matter. Like we could touch each other and like see, look into each other's eyes and like feel that share energy like create and culminate and cultivate energy that would be like another dream of ours and who knows maybe that'll happen in a few years we're not really setting like caps or deadlines at this point but we see also in osara kind of where the community is growing here like for example right now we're like at a co-working space that we signed up that someone started and that allows all these digital nomads which the world is filled with right now due to the pandemic so many people now have found a way to work online and through their computers it allows people to come and find that work and office space in a community like this we're like well what if we gave that opportunity for people to do but brought a little bit more connection and spirituality and and community of like-mindedness into it so again ideas you guys wanted to know kind of what's in in our in our dream list and that's something we're just opening ourselves to the universe and, and we're seeing maybe the the right stars will align and that opportunity will come and if it doesn't it won't but you know no we're, no, no we're open we're, we're definitely open, open to, to the downloads and, and to the yeah. the pathways which yeah. will come the inspirations hunches and ideas and then from that should we focus on it as we've seen our decisions today will define our tomorrow and this is the chapter one here <laughs> we create our own reality you just have to think it you literally and what you, you have think to manifest it with your thoughts you have yeah. to and, and if we, and with your feeling that's something i i've been reading this beautiful book uh, recently about how manifestation is not just about like thinking it but it's truly feeling it and it's through that feeling that deeper connection of your emotional state in your heart is how you can truly be an alchemist in your 
your life and you can manifest things into reality so can you guys hear us okay because as they say in spanish someone's using their moto garrana <laughs> like it's like it's just a weed whacker and there's it's a, there's super a lot loud. of construction you guys hear us okay because we can maybe cut over to some questions actually first let's talk about today's sponsor cue the cheesy music <laughs> so today's sponsor is also our tripod our tripod <laughs> is sun warrior <laughs> and sun warrior is our sponsor for these boho frequencies because we love them so much we actually we use their product so much every day almost this is smoothie. the warrior vanilla yeah. blend and uh, it's really good protein powder and we use it a lot, so we've agreed to work with them and just give them shout outs in different podcasts and things like that we do with you guys because we believe in the brand and what's better than sharing authentically products that really, really help us in our life with hopes that it can maybe add some value to your guys' life as well. We'll include the link uh, to Sun Warrior I think it's down 10, below. It's 10 this. off through that link. And yeah, sometimes they give something. us the ability to give a coupon code for more, but right now it's 10% off. And the protein warrior the vegan omegas there's a collagen there's a collagen but i really actually i've been using every day there's like um it's not a hydrator the hydrator is really good i use that sometimes too but there's one with like um energy it's sort of like a, just a shake and i actually put it with probiotic fiber and charcoal when i'm fasting sometimes at the end of the fast because the charcoal gets rid of toxins and heavy metals in your blood and the prebiotic fiber really helps clean out the brain um, and the, the connectivity, it's great for giving me a little boost as I start to break my fast. Mm -hmm. But Sun Warrior, guys, we'll put the link down below. Thank you, Sun Warrior, for being awesome and for being an amazing, conscious, vegan product that helps our health be extremely vital. Yeah. Um, it's, it's and that's, an, that's it's a sponsorship, but it's an honest truth. It's a staple of, our, a, of our life, so we're very, very proud to talk about it but and promote it. let's mm -hmm. do some questions. Mm -hmm. I kind of put this down because Moto Garanya is... <laughs> Really well, going for it. We'll do a it. couple minutes of questions. If there's anything specific that we haven't really touched upon that you guys want to ask us, go ahead and maybe we I will can have break to break this like that. Uh, close off our podcast soon because Xavier is great. He, someone just asked how's Xavier. He's doing wonderful. Um, he, our, our nanny that's looking after him right now, is done in very very soon. So we're gonna have to get back to him. Do um, you guys tell me first before we jump in, and we'll go back on a few of these questions I see coming in. How is the noise? Everyone's is, saying it's fine. Is it okay? Yeah. It's so loud. It's making me crazy. It's fine. Okay. It's fine. <laughs> okay. All right. So we'll just jump in and we're going to fire them off because sometimes when we do questions, we like go way too long. So maybe we'll just like try to fire it off a little bit as quickly as I can or we can. What do you think? Um, sure. Do you live in Costa Rica? Yes. We are in Nosaro right now but we are always open to seeing where life takes us and we may travel somewhere in summer maybe not we're kind of open books when, when it comes to that hmm. um can we remail out the survey no i we can't because i um it's out and check your junk mail if you didn't get it if you did and you threw it out check your trash but i don't know just do your best and you can if you didn't receive it you can email contact at bohobeautiful.life and you can there you can ask Jordan to possibly resend it or to make sure that you're not on a list that's not allowing the email to send to you but we send it through the boho official you get two you should be getting two emails a month one at the beginning of the month that talks about who the um, karma project is yeah. and then one at the middle where you get to vote for the karma project the winner no i don't like winner but when you get to vote the for one the, with the most votes and then usually the, we, we pick three different charities how we started doing it the one with the most votes gets two thousand dollars and then the two runner-ups or the other ones get five hundred dollars each that way we feel like we're not just giving everything to one but you know we'll see what who votes the most um, gets the most charity so that's that where one. you get to be involved mm -hmm. in choosing and selecting and the survey which helps us in the boho beautiful world on where to put our energy next juliana can you give one book recommendation for yoga meditation on personal development for rachel lang um can be anything doesn't have to be your favorite i can share right now oh this? she's gonna share a i book. have a book a little book here that's been oh the violet flame i've been very drawn to this and and the work of uh Great Ascended Master Saint Germain, and it's in my in my uh, in her bag right my now. bag right now that uh, I refer to. I actually read this in like one day, but it's super easy read, and 
let's get some beautiful meditations here so that would be my my go-to right now just top of my head and i have a similar one like that mm -hmm. actually yogananda's um laws of success mm -hmm. i think it's called laws of success it's like a tiny little book and i usually order six at a time and i give them to anyone i run into that it seems like to the universe lines up i think you can buy it on like amazon for five bucks or mm -hmm. four bucks so i always order a bunch and like like that i usually keep them in my in my pocket or my my computer bag or my computer sleeve and then sometimes you just meet someone randomly and you have this like you know when you meet someone you have that connection um and sometimes and you want to share and you want to share so it's mm -hmm. like it just seems to it's i don't know it's one of those things mm -hmm. so yogananda it's amazing um how about this trees and plants do you use mushroom or plant medicine that's a that's a question we get asked a lot and we'll let's keep it brief though um no not really no we we're a little bit more pure in that way i guess not that no not right now the answer is no <laughs> not right now i guess we feel it's something we can talk about a lot yeah that when you're called you should follow that calling but if you're if you don't feel alignment to it you shouldn't do it it's like the plant medicine it will speak to you when when it is time so but that's that, how we see it but that's a blog in itself yeah that yeah. we could really talk about yeah and um, we have actually once here we have a friend that does beautiful sweat lodges up on the mountain and she actually grows a lot of plant medicine and she gave us a little tiny microdose of um, like a, a peyote, tincture drop of pe peyote. peyote cactus and it was the most grounding beautiful experience not it's not psych like it's psychedelic if you take it in a larger quantities but it just a tiny microdose is perfect and so yeah like we've, we've used plant medicine for those kinds of um needs but uh not anything further right now but who knows okay so we're a little behind on the question so lindsay thompson will you ever go back to canada i hope so yeah i hope so we really really really, really, hope, really so. hope so mm -hmm. but um we have family there we miss them so we miss them greatly and we, now my two cousins from ukraine are in canada as well so we really 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 love to see them and we so. can't wait to have permission to go and leave again yeah so, how's that yeah um da, 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 da. sophia maya how is the behind the scenes when you guys are recording it's usually really hot oh yeah <laughs> on the beach well you see anything from costa rica it's, oh uh, we went to Oskiana last week to shoot we, we try to go videos. like seven in the morning just as the sun rises so by like 10 a.m we're done because if you go past 10 it's like is it hot yoga times 100. but it was dark sand beach and that conducts so much heat Oh my god, it was crazy. Um, Christina Jane coaching. My son would like to know if Mark would be doing any more yin classes. He loves them. Tell your son yeah. more yin classes are <laughs> underway. <Yes. laughs> um, next month, oh, from Laura, Laura Lorente Benedic Benedicto. Next month is birthday month for Juliana. Any it plans? Is. No plans. Not yet. My birthday's but May she, 16. She loves her birthday so much and she always makes plans. I so should. You always, you always like, what am I last, gonna do this Last year on my birthday, we did like a group Tamaskal. It was amazing. Just, like everyone singing in a circle in a heat tent and praying. Mm -hmm. Very cleansing. That was my birthday party. So we'll see, we'll see. So Open nothing. To it. Natalie Walker's, what's your focus for new uploads? Will you repeat the summer body series? It was great. Love the Pilates. Oh, good. That's so basically. Yes, that's what we're doing. Every, every like May, June, we always find that people kind of get into the groove of like really getting on building strength and you know it's summertime and that whole like feeling of wanting to get in shape uh you know people feel like that and so yes the series that are going to be coming to you is going to be more focused on like yoga workouts power yoga but helping you build strength and flexibility and a little more toning and sculpting of the body so that is in the works we shot three out of four classes already for the new series for the official community so that should be going up very, first very one's soon. like next week I think. actually yeah first one will be next week so keep your eyes open for that guys sarah murphy anderson yeah. does xavian love dogs came in sibling in his future them. maybe yes right now we're kind of constantly in transition so we can't dedicate our time to too many dogs but once we settle in a little more grounding in a permanent home then uh, our goal is to adopt a couple of dogs to start and then we'll see how it goes but yes we are definitely in need of some dogs in our life that's for sure john is talking about lion's manes and mushrooms are amazing and actually john lion's mane every day that's the closest mushrooms we do is we put uh, it in our coffee lion's mane and cordyceps yeah. every single day for brain power and for energy um so Let's we two more questions we run out of time here. we got a little oh yeah we are okay uh, um jason freeman 
This is cool. About to have my first child, I'm curious if Xavier is plant-based as well. He is, yeah. He's been plant-based. I mean, I was vegan through my whole pregnancy, and he is fully vegan right now, and he's healthy and thriving. Check out the Alicia Silverstone book, because mm -hmm. she's a plant-based mother, and that book had a lot of yeah, insight, right? The Kind Mama. The Kind Mama, Alicia mm -hmm. Silverstone. Um, oh, it keeps jumping. Thank you, my son will be soon. Okay, I think that's, I think we're, Chaga's very good also. I think we got through a lot. Okay, you guys. Oh, Tiki collab update from Lightful Yoga. We have our first prototype of pants to check out very soon. How about that? That's all we'll say, but we're excited to share more about that, So you Tiki guys. Yoga Pant collab. Yeah. Coming right along. Coming right along. <laughs> so lots in the future. The future's mm -hmm. bright. Yeah. Even when the times are challenging and dark, I think we all have to recognize that the future is always bright. Oh, oh that's a sweet message from Alice. Hi, Alice. Is that uh? all? <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. That's amazing. Okay. Um, well. All right, you guys. This is our one hour live stream. It's exactly on time. Almost exactly. Almost exactly on time. I uh, just wanted to say a huge thank you to all of you for being here. It's been so wonderful to, to share and to connect and to read your questions and to just feel your love. It always such a beautiful recharge and fill of our energy. So thank you. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you for this community. And um, yeah, like we're going to do this once a month now. So stick around and, uh, and we, we are yeah. deeply grateful yeah. for you guys, for all of your energy. It's so reciprocal mm -hmm. for all that we put in. You also give us back yeah. in order to allow us to put in again. And it's so. that amazing symbiotic relationship that keeps us going. Together we make the light brighter. Yeah. Right? That's all we can do is be our own light in this world as and Bu come together and shine brighter. As Buddha mm -hmm. says, be a light unto yourself. All right. All our love. Have a beautiful weekend, everybody. And uh, we shall see you soon. Amazing. <laughs> Bye. That was so much fun.